We read as follows this portion of God's word, which will be the foundation and the framework of the message today. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So far the text. In the name of Jesus, the one who is stronger than Satan and death and all things. Dear fellow redeemed sinners and creatures of the one true only living, creating and preserving triune God. The Bible says, the rich man's wealth is his strong city, and as an high wall in his own conceit. Man tends to be conceited about his own strength and power. Thinks that he is strong and good. But what is man to be conceited about? Man is not strong. Man is weak. How weak? So weak that he can't even obey his God. Man is weak in sin. He sins all the time. He sins deliberately. He sins non-deliberately. He can remember some of his sins, but most of his sins he can't even remember. He knows some of his sins, but some of his sins he committed in ignorance and didn't even know he was sinning. He has sinned against all ten of God's commandments. He sins in thought, in word, and in deed. Man sins by commission and omission. What is he to be conceited about? Why does he think he's so strong and mighty? He can't even obey a single commandment of God by nature. That's weak. Oh, but he thinks he's strong. He's conceited. He thinks he's good. He thinks he has pleased God with his life. Even earned heaven. Tell you a story about a young man. He reached the age of 21 and got his inheritance. He came into a lot of money. The first thing he did is he went out and bought a yacht. And then he hired a man to run it. But he proclaimed himself captain. And he went out and bought a uniform. You know, with the gold braid and the brass buttons and the white hat. And then he invited his mother out for a cruise on his new yacht. So his mother comes out, and they get on the, on the boat, and they shove off from the dock. And then, Sonny Boy, he goes down under the deck, he goes down below decks, and he puts on his new uniform. Then he comes up on the deck, and he parades before his mom and says, Look, Mommy, I'm a captain. Now his mother just kind of sits there looking at him. Sonny, maybe to you, you're a captain. Maybe to me, you're a captain. But Sonny, to other captains, you're no captain. Just like all people by nature, conceited, Thinking they're strong, they're mighty, they're powerful, they're good. And they can save themselves before God. But the Bible says, All of our righteousness is ours filthy rags, and you do all fade as a leaf. What have we to be conceited about? Maybe by us, we're good. Maybe by our neighbors, we are good. But by God, we are not good. And even our righteousnesses are as filthy rags, 
in the eyes of Almighty God. The Bible says the weakness of God is stronger than men. God has the power, not us. God has the goodness, not us. There was an old man who attended church every Sunday for years and years and years. And whenever the Lord's Prayer was spoken by the congregation, whenever it got down to the last conclusion of the, of the uh, Lord's Prayer, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, Whenever the congregation got down to that, and it said, Thine is the kingdom and the power, this man stood up and yelled, Hallelujah, 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 every time. Thine is the power. Thine is the power. Not us. We are weak. So weak we can't even obey God. It is only by God's power that we are saved from sin, death, and hell. Alone, by the power of Jesus Christ, God the Son, we are saved. Not by our power, because we have none to please God. Jesus, God the Son, come from heaven, conceived in the Virgin Mary, the God-man, true God, true man, living under the laws of God, followed the laws of God perfectly as a man, and then offered up his perfect, infinite, sinful, sinless life for us sinful human beings in our place as our substitute. That is how strong Jesus is. That is what saves us and that alone. And after he died on a cross to atone for all of our sins for us, he rose from the dead on the third day and he showed himself to his disciples and he showed to his disciples his hands and his feet. Why? because they contained the nail prints of where he had been nailed to the cross. Truly, the same Jesus who died and was buried, he rose again, and that changed everything for the disciples of Jesus. Those nail prints, they saw the nail prints, and that was the ground of their faith, and their peace with God. There were the scars that had paid for their sins in their place. <coughs> the Bible says, say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not, behold your God will come, he will come and save you. Our strength is in the Lord the triune God, Jesus Christ being God the Son. But there is someone who is constantly working to keep us from this, keeping us from trusting in God's power in Christ Jesus, and that is Satan. He wants us to trust in ourselves, not in Jesus. Every believer in Christ Jesus must stand against this great enemy, the devil. Jesus said, whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. When a human being becomes a Christian, a Christ believer, believing in Christ as his God and his his Savior, alone from sin, death, and hell. That includes repenting of all sins. The faith in Christ means I confess I am weak. I am helpless. I have sinned against God 
and I can do nothing to change that or to save myself from its consequences. And Jesus said, take up your cross now and follow your Savior, follow me, repenting of your sins. Your flesh is going to tempt you. Your flesh is, is going to tempt you to take a rest from godliness, to take a rest from coming to church, to take a rest from reading the Bible, take a rest from praying to Jesus. Satan is going to tempt us to take a rest. The world around us, full of unbelief, is going to tempt us to deny Jesus. But our heart must then not fail us. The Bible says, Be ye not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, by the scriptures. So when we come to faith in Jesus, we'll have a great enemy who will whisper in our ears every day, don't believe it, doubt it, and don't spend time in God's word. Almost tempting us to say, you're strong enough, you don't believe that. You don't need that. You don't need church, you don't need the Bible. You don't need prayer. You're strong enough on your own. But God says, persevere. Persevere in true faith. Faith in the true God and in Christ Jesus, your Savior. But it will be hard work. It will be taking up your cross every day. No Christian duty that is not difficult. Everything that God commands you to do will be difficult. It won't be easy. The devil will see to that. There are many in the course of history, history is strewn with people who at one time professed to be Christians. But so few really are because of this. There are many who started out carrying this cross of being a Christ follower. They went into battle with Satan, but they didn't conquer because they trusted in their own strength. When they had none, instead of trusting in the strength that only God has. And so, they started out true Christians, and they worked like Christian soldiers for a little while, maybe a battle, maybe two battles, but soon they've had enough, and they give up, and they go back to their former way of life, trusting in themselves. To be a Christ follower, to bear your cross after Jesus, takes courage, it takes strength, it takes resolve, to be a Christ follower, not just for a few battles, but for the rest of your earthly life, which could be decades, what we call the long haul. How can we do that? Where do we get the strength to do that? Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You know, I think it takes more strength, more power, more might for a person to say no to temptation to sin than it takes to do anything else in life. Think of what, what, what would take courage and strength. Maybe 
attacking a machine gun nest in a war. You think, wow, that would take a lot of bravery and, and power and strength. I think it's harder to withstand temptation to sin. Where do we get that kind of strength? Where do we get that kind of guts? Where do we get that kind of backbone to repent of our sins? Out of love for Jesus. Where do we get that strength? Where do we get the strength to go to another person, an unbeliever, and tell him about Jesus Christ, his Savior, and that he's lost without Jesus? Where do we get that strength? Where do we get the stamina to pray every day, day after day after day, to pray and pray and pray and keep on praying all our life? And keep going to church and keep going to Bible class. Keep studying God's word our whole life, year after year after year after year. The Israelites were freed from slavery in Egypt by God. They came into the wilderness of Sinai. And it came time for them to enter the promised land, Canaan. And their leader, chosen by God, at that point was Joshua. And before Joshua led the army of Israelites across the Jordan into the land of Canaan, the promised land, as God had commanded them to do, before Joshua attacked Canaan, God said to Joshua, be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest be thou strong and very courageous Joshua that thou mayest How do you finish that sentence? How did God finish that sentence? Be thou strong Joshua, be thou very courageous Joshua that thou mayest Defeat these mighty Canaanites that are bigger than you and more powerful than you and have greater weapons than you? Is that how he finished that sentence? No. God said to Joshua before he attacked Canaan, Be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest Observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. It took greater strength, greater courage for Joshua or anyone else to obey the commandments of God than to attack in a war. God says to every Christ believer, watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit ye like men, be strong. Many are not strong enough, and they go away from Christ sorrowing, because they trust in their own strength, and don't appropriate to themselves daily. The strength that only God can give them. How do we as Christians get this kind of strength? We don't find it within ourselves. Our text tells us very clearly. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You get this strength, this power, this might, the same place you got salvation from God, not from yourself. The Bible says, the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. 
King David said, God delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. The Bible says, be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Again, the Bible says, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Are Christians weak or are they strong? Christians are strong. The true Christians are. They're not weaklings. Because they are constantly appropriating the strength of God. God's strength. Not conceited, not trusting in their own strength, but appropriating God's strength in their life. And how do they do this? Bible again says, the people that do know their God shall be strong. Know God. And how do we know God? Studying his word. First of all, be quite clear what you believe. With no doubts, no question marks. No, well, I'm not sure about this or I'm not sure of that. And how do you know what you believe as a Christian? You study. You study the Bible. You study and you study and you study. And you hear and you hear and you hear. Day in, day out. Week in, week out. Year in, year out. The people that do know their God shall be strong. It's appalling that so many so-called Christians can hardly articulate, articulate the basics of the, of the faith that they claim. There's a little boy once, little boy, and uh, his great big father. And his father says to his son, his little boy, I have an errand for you. And the little boy, he just immediately turned around and ran away. He started on the errand before he even knew what the errand was. And so it is with some, many who think they're Christians. Know what your errand is as a Christ believer. He that knows not well what or whom he fights for may soon be persuaded to change sides or gravitate towards neutrality. First of all, be quite clear what you believe. And that is by studying God's word, the Holy Scriptures. And then secondly, be quite sure that you do believe. No doubts. No questionings about the Bible. Well, is this really true? Science says something different. I learned something different in school or at a museum or on TV. They told me something differently. Doesn't work. Appropriate God's strength by knowing what you believe and being sure you do believe it without doubts or questions. Well, the Lord's Supper, it's, Jesus said, this is my body, this is my blood, but I don't know. I, I question that. It, it doesn't taste like blood. It doesn't taste like flesh. I think it's just maybe 
bread and, bread and wine. You see, that's doubts. That's questions. That's not believing. Be quite sure that you do believe. And then you will appropriate God's strength to withstand the attacks of Satan that are sure to come against your faith. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all of man's understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.